cancer of the anal canal. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. This is a uncommon cancer. It accounts for only 2.4 percent of GI malignancies. The numbers here for 2013 are shown. It's more common in women than men and again much less common than colon or rectal cancer. The average age is 60 which is younger than other cancers. The crude death rate is only 12 percent which means it's a less aggressive cancer than many. The separation between anal cancer and rectal cancer can be confusing for patients but in general anal canal cancer is usually squamous cell carcinoma is caused by HPV infections and is treated primarily with chemo radiation. Rectal cancer is almost always adenocarcinoma. It arises from a malignant polyp and is almost always treated with surgery with or without chemo or radiation. Rectal bleeding is the most common initial symptom occurring in about 45 percent of the patients. This is often confused with symptoms from hemorrhoids. About 30 percent of the patients may have pain or a sense of a rectal mass or lump, but about 20 percent of the patients have no symptoms at all. The cellular classification of anal cancer, these are almost always squamous cell cancers. This can be called epidermoid cancer. About 25 percent are called cloacogenic or basaloid, and they're now basically called non-keratinizing squamous cancers. The histology, as noted, squamous and non-keratinizing squamous and basically they're now treated similarly. Most of these cancers are caused by HPV or human papillomavirus infection. For instance cervix cancer is almost always caused by HPV cancer and anus cancer is noted about 84 percent of the time or better is caused by this infection. The stats for the last several years are shown here this is becoming a more common cancer. It's still not as common as cervix cancer. And recently oral pharynx cancer has been shown to be caused by HPV infections as well. The type of HPV is usually a so-called high-risk HPV type, like type 16 and 18. This is shown here. A recent study compared the prevalence of finding high-risk HPV infections in anal cancer and 84 percent of the specimens had this type of virus in rectal cancer was virtually zero percent. So there's a big distinction between anal cancer and rectal cancer. They're totally different diseases. The anatomy of the anal canal is basically the lower four centimeters of the rectum between the anal verge and the levator ani muscle. The dentate or pectinate line right in the middle basically splits this area. Two centimeters above and two centimeters below is the anal canal. Similar anatomy, the lower four centimeters of the rectum would be the anal canal and the transitional zone or pectinate line is basically right in the middle. Similar showing of the anatomy. Here's a side view of the female anatomy and again you can see the other structures that might be nearby such as the bladder and the uterus and in a man similarly the structures nearby such as the bladder and the prostate. The lymph nodes at rest, cancers in the lower or distal region meaning below the pectinate line are more likely to spread to superficial or inguinal lymph nodes. Cancers that are proximal meaning above the dentate line can spread more complicated to anal rectal, perirectal, paravertebral or paraaortic and internal iliac lymph nodes. The position of some of these lymph nodes are shown here, periortic, pelvic and inguinal nodes and then the perirectal lymph nodes. The staging system for this cancer as in all cancers is called the TNM system. You first look at the size of the tumor. T1 would be 2 centimeters, T2 2 to 5 centimeters, T3 over 5 centimeters and T4 invading other organs. You then look at the lymph nodes and the number of lymph nodes involved and this would be the N category. M means evidence of distant metastatic disease and these are combined then to form the stages. 
Stage 1 and 2 have no lymph nodes. Stage 3 has lymph node spread. And basically, stage 4 means it's metastasized elsewhere in the body. Cancer imaging for this cancer. Many patients start with a CT scan or an MRI scan of the pelvis. And a PET scan can be even more sensitive. A recent study showed the sensitivity of a PET scan to look for nymph lymph nodes was 89% compared to only 62% for a CAT scan or an MRI. Here's a typical CT from the side view showing a large anal cancer in a male. The gray area on the CT is the area of abnormal cancer. A PET scan shows this even better. Since cancers use more glucose than normal, they're called hypermetabolic, a PET scan uses radioactive glucose or sugar and will light up the areas of abnormal cancer. So in the CAT scan above, there's a gray area of thickening, and the PET scan below lights this up or changes colors. Similar side view in a woman, the gray area in the CAT scan can be somewhat confusing, but with the PET scan, it's easy to separate the anal cancer from the normal rectum, uterus, bladder, and vagina. Another view using a PET scan of a very small anal cancer and another view of the similar low anal canal cancer on a PET scan. The PET scans, as noted, are very helpful for lymph node metastases. This is a PET scan showing spread to the inguinal or groin lymph nodes. This is a PET scan showing spread to pelvic and periaortic lymph nodes. Another PET scan showing multiple periaortic lymph nodes. The best advice on treating this cancer is found on the National Comprehensive Cancer Network's website. This can be accessed at nccn.org. This can be quite complicated, but patients may want to ask their doctor to review the current NCCN guidelines with them. Basically, the guidelines would say the patients need to start with a biopsy to confirm, in fact, that this is squamous cell carcinoma. The workup starts often with a digital rectal exam and an examination of the inguinal nodes, and then an abdominal CT or MRI, and then perhaps a PET scan as noted. The treatment of anal cancer is different than rectal cancer as noted. For the early stages of anal canal cancer, radiation combined with chemo, in this case 5-FU and mitomycin, Anal margin, which is basically skin cancer rising on the edge of the anus, can be treated with surgery, wide local excision if it's early, stage one. But if it's more advanced, these patients also get radiation combined with 5-FU and mitomycin. If the cancer has already spread or metastasized, then cisplatinum chemotherapy may be preferable. If radiation is used, the initial step is called a simulation. A CAT scan is obtained. The images of the patient are fused into the computer with the CT and PET scan. The computer will develop an image or reconstruction of the patient's anatomy. This shows the side view with the anal mass and the green or the lymph node areas as shown. Treatment technique with IMRT or in this case a tomotherapy device. The red radiation cloud is shown surrounding the area that's the target. This is another view with tomotherapy showing the ability of an IMRT or image-guided IMRT technique to have the radiation cloud in red surround the anus and then go towards the front and hit the groin lymph nodes and yet avoid hitting the bladder or the femurs. So the radiation technique, this is well spelled out. The normal technique is Monday through Friday, five to six weeks. Radiation works best when it's combined with chemotherapy at the same time. There's a minimal dose of 45 gray or about five weeks, and the dose can go up as high as 54 to 59 gray. And the radiation should include the lymph nodes for at least part of the treatment. The RTOG, or Radiation Therapy Oncology Study Group, has published guidelines that enable the doctor to better evaluate the targeting or contouring of patients with anal rectal cancer. And this is a typical image from the RTOG. The light blue or aqua is the radiation zone that's surrounding the rectum, the anal region, the lymph nodes, and the groin lymph nodes. This was another radiation dose painting 
IMRT or intensity modulated radiation technique. The red circle or red zone is the highest dose around the rectum. The blue or aqua is the lower lymph nodes and the yellow is where a high risk lymph node is getting a little higher dose of radiation. The IMRT technique in the RTOG trial did show a lower risk of side effects than using more conventional or old-fashioned radiation. The side effects of pelvic radiation of course depend on structures that are in the way. In a radiation field in this area it's likely the radiation can hit the small bowel, the colon, the rectum, the hip bones, the bladder, the uterus, and the lymph nodes. All of these can be affected by radiation. The most common side effects of radiation to the small bowel or lymph node area might be diarrhea, cramps, or fatigue. The most common side effects related to the radiation to the high dose area around the anal rectal area can be bladder irritation or burning, diarrhea or rectal irritation, and particularly a lot of skin burning or skin irritation. In premenopausal women, the radiation can also affect the uterus and ovarian function. The results with combined chemo radiation are quite good. The local failure rates now are only 14 to 37 percent. Five-year survival rate runs 72 to 89 percent. Five-year colostomy free survival, meaning the patient is alive and was able to avoid a colostomy, is quite good, 70 to 86 percent. And here's survival curves from one of the recent RTOG trials. The mitomycin arm came out the best, 78 percent five-year survival. Here's similar data from the NCDB database. In this data, the patients with non-squamous types had a lower outcome than patients with more traditional squamous cell carcinoma. It's now a generally all squamous cancers are combined together. The five-year survival for anal cancer, stage one and two, as noted, is fairly good. This is from the National Cancer Database. The SEER database also shows similar results. About 50% of patients present with local disease and have an 80% survival. Regional, which means lymph nodes, about 29%, and a 60% survival. And even those patients who have metastatic disease, 30% were still alive at five years. Again, similar, similar summary data from the chemoradiation trial. Overall five-year survival, 70 to 75%. Local regional recurrence was only 25 to 33 percent. The odds of requiring a colostomy was only 10 to 19 percent. And similar data by T stage and lymph node stage as noted. Other similar data, the odds of requiring a colostomy only 10 to 30 percent. It's more likely in a patient with a large tumor. 26 percent of the colostomies were due to recurrent cancer and only 8% were due to radiation damage to the rectum. All the details can be found on the website of aboutcancer.com.